In this lesson, we'll take a look at graphing rational functions of the form ax plus b over cx plus d. So basically, we have a linear function over a linear function, or a first-degree polynomial over a first-degree polynomial. And in this example, which is on this page and the next, we're asked to determine the key features of the function 2x over x minus 3 and use them to graph the function. And the key features are uh, uh, domain and range, vertical asymptotes, behavior near the vertical asymptotes, intercepts where the function is increasing and decreasing. And so we'll gather those between this page and the next and graph this function. So first of all, 3 is a number that's of interest in this function because it's what makes the denominator expression 0. And so the vertical asymptote, and that's my abbreviation for vertical asymptote, would be x equals 3. The domain of this function is all real numbers except x can't equal 3. Remember, that's a vertical line uh, in the graph that's uh, special. Uh, the uh, function does not cross. It gets close to it. x can get close to 3 from the left to right, but it does never, does never touch that. Now, to, to determine the behavior close to 3, I'll take a number a little bit below 3, like very close to 3, and then one uh, slightly above. And so 2.99 is to the left of positive 3. And so uh, we're investigating here how the function behaves when x is approaching 3 from the left side. And if we uh, put 2.999 here and here and evaluate it, we get negative 5,998. And so what that shows is that as x approaches 3 from below, and that's what that little negative means right there. It does not mean negative 3. As x approaches 3 from below or from the left side, the y value becomes an extremely large negative value. So y is tending towards negative infinity. So as you approach 3 from the left side, the graph is going down really, really steep. And let's take a look at the, on, the, on the other side as well. So as, as uh, x approaches 3 from the right side, 3.001 is to the right of 3, a little bit bigger than 3, the function value is a little over 6,000. And so we say that as x approaches 3 from the right side, uh, y is tending towards a very large positive value, so it tends towards infinity. If we put a number even closer to 3 on the right side, y would be even larger. Now there's a horizontal asymptote for this function as well. And to find that, we take a look at the largest power of x in the numerator and the largest power of x in the denominator, and so that's 2x over x. And the x's divide out, so that tends towards 2 as x becomes large. And if you're wondering why I omitted the 3 here, it's because if x becomes really big, uh, then x is a large value. Subtracting 3 changes that value only very slightly. You see the, the behavior of the 3, because the 3 is constant as x becomes large, becomes insignificant. And to take a look at an example of why that's true, if I substitute a large value in place of x, like a 1,000, in the numerator we have 2 times a 1,000, in the denominator we have 1,000 minus 3. Well, subtracting 3 from a 1,000, you're still pretty close to a 1,000. And so the 3, again, becomes insignificant. If we actually evaluate this, you get 2.006 approximately. You see, if the 3 hadn't been there, we would actually have 2,000 divided by 1,000, and it would have been exactly 2. Subtracting the 3 means that this is going to be slightly larger than 2. And so you see it, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. If you put a large number in place of x, you're still a little bit bigger than 2. And the bigger number you put in place of x, the closer you actually are to 2. But you're always going to be greater than 2. And so we say that as x tends towards infinity, as x tends towards a large value, the y value tends towards 2, but from above. So you're approaching that hor horizontal asymptote from above like this, and we'll take a look at that in the graph on the next page. If you go to the far left and substitute a large number that's negative in place of x, uh, at like negative 1,000, for example, and evaluate that, you see the denominator expression is a little bit um, below negative 1,000 be negative 1,003. And so dividing negative 2,000 by negative 1,003, we get a number very slightly below 2. It's 1.995 approximately. 
and so it's a little bit less than 2 so that means or shows that as x tends towards a very large negative value the y value is tending towards 2 still 2 but from below and if you took a, a, a negative to further down like to the left of negative 1000 uh, then you would find that this number is even closer to 2 but it's still a little bit below 2 flipping over to the next page and I'm gonna actually let me go back and recap here so as you as you approach the vertical asymptote from the left you're going way up down as you approach the vertical asymptote from the right you're going way way up high as you approach uh, the far far right of the graph you're tending towards two but from above as you approach the graph from the far left you're tending towards two from below so back to our graph here We'll draw the vertical asymptote at x equals 3. And the last page it says you tend towards that vertical asymptote from the right, you're going towards a large positive value. As you tend towards the left, you're going towards a large negative. The horizontal asymptote was y equals 2. Towards the far right, you're staying above the 2. Towards the far left, you're staying below 2. And that's what we took a look at in the last, the first page. Now to find the intercepts, if I substitute 0 in place of x to find the y or function intercept, 2 times 0 of course is 0, and 0 divided by negative 3 is 0. And so that means that the point 0, 0 is on the graph. Now if I try to find the x-intercept by setting the function equal to 0, I end up getting exactly the same thing, because we would solve this by setting 2x equal to 0, and so we would get 0 again. And so the uh, only intercepts actually are at zeros, the point zero zero. So there's the uh, only x and the only y intercept. Now to locate a few points in the graph and then to determine the slope of a, sec a secant line to see if the function's increasing or decreasing, uh, I'm going to find the uh, point whose x coordinate is one. So I'm putting one in place of x, and we'd have two divided by negative two, which is negative one. So that means that the point 1, negative 1 is on the graph. And so there's the point 1, negative 1. Now I'm going to find the slope of the secant line between these. And of course you can tell it's sloping in this direction. The slope should be negative. So negative 1 minus uh, the y coordinate of 0 here is in, on the numerator. And then 1 minus the x coordinate of 0 here in the denominator. And so we get a slope of negative 1. So it's, it's decreasing here. The slope is negative, sloping down as you go from left to right. Now, to locate a couple points over here, I'm going to put 5 in place of x. So this would be 10 divided by 2, which of course is 5. And so that's the point 5, 5. And we'll plot that in the graph. There's the point 5, 5. And I'll find the uh, point whose x coordinate is 6 as well. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. And so we have the point 6, 4. And I'll find the slope of the secant line between these two points. So 4 minus 5 over 6 minus 5. And again, it's negative 1. So notice the slope is negative again. So the function is decreasing. See, the secant line is, is negative there, and it is here as well. And of course, you can see the graph. It's going down. So it's decreasing below. 3, which means to the left of the vertical asymptote here, and to the right of the vertical asymptote here. And so if we draw on the graph, and up here as well, that's what the function looks like. So it's a completely decreasing function. You, didn't, you don't say for, you actually have to break into two intervals, below 3 and above 3, because remember the function is undefined at 3.